Life comes at you fast, and baseball's in the major leagues even faster. The speed of the pitch taught me an incredibly valuable lesson, that to achieve the seemingly unachievable, you have to go slow to go fast. Right out of high school, I was drafted and signed by the Toronto Blue Jays and placed on a minor league team. I had what scouts look for, a strong throwing arm, running speed, and a smooth left-handed swing. And within a few years, I had worked my way up to the major leagues. My career was on target and life was good. That is until my boyhood fantasies about the major leagues collided with reality. My vision of the majors was out of glamour and fun. I'd travel to different cities each week, bond with my teammates and coaches, and the moment I stepped on the field, I'd be an all-star. Yeah, if only. In reality, the constant travel was both physically and mentally exhausting, making it difficult to perform well. Also, hitting at the highest level was harder than anything I had ever done. Yet what bothered me the most was that my manager and coaches seemed completely indifferent to me. And having been the teacher's and coach's pet all through high school, not having their approval made me feel like an outcast. The next punch came, the next punch came when they wanted to change my hitting style from up the middle to right field. They reasoned that I was a hitter with power potential, and hitting the right field would cultivate that power. But I was sure that changing my approach to theirs would make me a one-dimensional hitter. You know, maybe I'd hit a few more home runs, but in turn, my batting average would suffer. But what could I do? So I half-heartedly went along with the hitting drills. And as a result, my performance during those early years was erratic and uninspired. It was as if I was in between worlds, not true to them, and more importantly, not true to myself. The pressure to perform their way became so intense that my anger turned inward, and I became depressed. I knew that if I didn't do well, I'd be benched, or worse yet, sent back down to the minor leagues. Because in the majors, you only have a small window to define who you are, and my clock was ticking. Then one off-season, I decided to reach beyond my comfort zone, and I called upon a Qigong instructor. Now, if that sounds a little far out there for a baseball player, you're right. But at this point, I was open to exploring the answers that other worlds might hold. Qigong is an ancient Chinese martial arts form of meditation that integrates physical postures, breathing techniques, and focused intentions. As it became a part of my daily routine, I was surprised at how quickly I began to enjoy and actually look forward to it. Within the first month, I started to notice some of the positive effects, a calmer mind, increased clarity, and a physical sense of peace. By the end of my break, I felt centered and ready for the next season. That is, until early in the next year, I discovered that I had been benched indefinitely. Now, it doesn't take long for a player in the major leagues to be labeled as a non-starter, and this really worried me. So in desperation, I went directly to the general manager, and I begged him for a trade. It didn't happen. So at that moment, I made a conscious decision to go rogue. I would sneak to the batting cage on a daily basis and work on my swing my way. But all too quickly, my luck ran out when the hitting coach happened to see me tiptoeing to the cage without him. He chased me down and sternly said, the batting cage is off limits to you without my supervision. I stood there in disbelief. In an instant, my practice area had shrunk to the size of a T and a small net in a tunnel. I was furious. Those first few practice sessions at that T were fueled with that rage and that pride. But then, after a few days, something unexpected happened. I began to feel more freedom at the T than I'd ever felt in my major league career. And after I let out all that pent-up anger, I was able to look at that T with new appreciation. This space had few distractions, which made it easier for me to add the Qigong principles into my routine. From that moment forward, each swing received the focus and the respect that it deserved. Before I knew it, my up-the-middle approach 
was better than ever. And within a few short weeks, the general manager ordered me back in the lineup. Just so happens that my very first day back happened to be against one of the greatest pitchers of all time. And I knew that no matter how great my swing was feeling at the tee, the actual game is a whole other story. So I took a deep breath and called upon the tee meditation. I felt my fingers wrap lightly around the bat and my rhythmic breathing as I prepared for each pitch. I was deeply rooted in the here and now. That first game, I had a base hit and two home runs. In all my years, I had never experienced anything like that. I was in the zone, despite the fact that I'd been sitting on the bench for an entire month. And for the rest of that year, I played every day and at a whole new level. I knew then that meditation had made me better. In my life, I practice giving equal weight to all moments whether I'm standing in the batter's box at Yankee Stadium or merely washing the dishes at home. So for me, redefining relevance is simple. It's about being focused on just one thing at a time. Because when we're able to reduce the noise of modern life, our work gets better and our relationships deeper. We're able to let the joy in. You see, life goes by all too quickly. And the only way to slow it down is to cherish it. Because when you really think about it, this moment is all we really ever have. Thank you.